Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at the perspective warp feature in Photoshop and just how useful it can be and what you can really use it for. It's really, really cool. Um, and we're going to take a look and edit this photo of Pittsburgh that I took a few weeks ago when I was out there working on a, a photography job. And you can see because I shot it with a really wide angle lens, the buildings on both sides kind of almost have this slant toward the middle. The camera is pointed upward a little bit and it was very wide. It was 16 or 17 millimeters. Um, so we're going to play around around and adjust um, the, the perspective of this image using perspective warp. Now before we continue, GraphicStock.com is our sponsor this month, it's April of 2016 and that's GraphicStock's Creative Rewards Month. You can sign up and gain access to their over 300,000 stock photos for $39 for a 6 month period. That's if you're a new member. It's normally 49 bucks per month. All the photos are royalty free, you can download as many as you want in that period. You can keep them for as long as you want, use them for whatever you want, it's really pretty great. Plus, what if you need a photo like this that exemplifies your foray into the Tinder dating world? Hey, look, it's a building burning down. Between you and I, we both know it's a disaster. But you know what's not a disaster? Graphicstock.com. Check it out. There's a link down in the description of this video. And hey, they're our sponsor. Let's go back to Photoshop and talk about what we're here to talk about, and that's perspective warp. The first thing we want to do is convert our layer that we're perspective warping to a smart object. So we can right click on our background layer, say hey go ahead convert me to a smart object, voila. Then we go edit perspective warp. Now when we're in perspective warp the first thing that we have is our layout mode. Now layout mode is where we draw the perspective grids. So I'm going to drag out my first grid. I can move my grid around by just clicking and dragging it. I can move any side of my grid by just clicking on the side of the grid and dragging it. I can also hold down my shift key and drag it out to keep that grid going perfectly straight in whatever direction it's going, even if it's on a little bit of an angle. If I absolutely hate the grid and it's not working out for me, I can just select it you know, by clicking on it and then hit the delete key, boom, it deletes that one single grid. So I need to draw out a grid for each side of this building. We're going to work on this building right here. I need one, two, three, four grids. We're going to grid out both interior sides, then I'm going to speed the video up, I'm going to knock out the grids on the outer edges, and we're going to be ready to play around with this thing. So, let's drag out a grid, and what I want to do, I want to line up the vertical lines of my grid, as well as the horizontal lines of my grid. I want to match them to the stuff in the image as best I can. So, I'm going to pull this, uh, this line down here. I'm going to pull this line in right here and you can see our first vertical line is going right up and down that very edge of the building. Now I'm going to bring this into here. By the way, I'm picking my points down here based on where the base of the building would be. So I want that to run along uh, the base of the building. Alright, cool. And we need this vertical line to go along the interior uh, area of the, uh, of the, the building right there there, kind of like that. Now you can see that these horizontal lines do not run along the windows. Like this horizontal line here should be running along the base of this entire row of windows. So that means I need to zoom out a little bit more and pull this way up high. Kind of like that. Alright? And that is the perspective grid for that side of the building. Now, when I draw the second perspective grid, I can just drag one out, and when I drag it close to the edge of another perspective grid, it will automatically snap to that perspective grid. If I don't like it when they're connected, I can just hit the delete key. It's only going to delete the new portion of the perspective grid. Now, if I drag the perspective grid out again, and I just hover over that edge of the grid I've already placed, it will automatically connect as soon as I let go with my mouse. So cool. We've got the interior part of our grid set up. Let's drag the base over to right here. You know what? This, I think, needs to be dragged in a little bit more. Cool. And let's drag this to be in line with the outside corner of the building and also watch my horizontal lines to make sure they run. See kind of right along the entire top uh, of those windows right there. Great. Now I'm going to speed the video up. I'm going to attach the perspective grids to the two outer parts of the building. Great. So there we have our perspective grid all set up. If I zoom out one more tick, I can see really all of the points. And now I can go into warp mode. Now here in warp mode, there's a few little icons. These icons basically will automatically straighten either the vertical or horizontal lines, which can do all kinds of crazy things. If we go all verticals, you can see two parts of the building disappear. Command or control Z to undo that. If I straighten all the vertical lines, well, everything sort of straightens out, but it's still kind of funky too. So let's undo that. And then we can also straighten the horizontal and vertical lines. And you can see two sides of the building disappear entirely, but something cool does happen. We get an angled side of this building, which is now facing us with this full frontal face, and we have this wall of windows, which was not really in the original photo. Photoshop has stretched and constructed this wall of windows. So this is an interesting little thing to know you can do. I'm going to undo that as well, though. 
What we're going to do is we're going to select one of these anchor points. It can be any of them. And I am going to begin dragging around and seeing what I can do with perspective warps. So I can like, wow, I can drag that in like that. I could drag this over here. That's kind of cool. Uh, maybe I'll drag this out over here. Uh, maybe I want to see more of the side of the building over here, right? I can drag that out. That's cool. I'm going to drag this over. Neat. Now, now that we've messed around a little bit with this, I can hold down my shift key and I can hover over any horizontal or vertical line. And if I do that, it's going to automatically straighten that one single line and like lock it in. Think of it as like an anchor. So bam, we now have the line going straight up and down and that is anchored in. Um, so if I move, that whole side is going to move. All right, so I can really show like a lot more of that side of the building or a lot less of that side of the building. And theoretically, it's going to work with our perspective grid to make it all work. So I can pin this here, and then I can just maybe say, you know what, this needs to be more like that. And then this guy over here can be pulled out a little bit more, and stretched up a little bit more maybe, and pulled into the side. All right, so now we've sort of constructed this new kind of building, which is a little bit more straight, but still really messed up, and the road's doing this S-curve thing. Let's just say the whole thing is just a complete mess. We need to bring it back to just our grid. Well, we still have that reset button. We can hit that. It doesn't get rid of our original warping grid. It just gets rid of all the warping that we did. So we're not going to pin anything. We're going to do this uh, pretty free form here. We're going to just try to straighten this building up a little bit. So let's, um, let's do this here. Bring that over. I'm going to bring this in a little bit. I'm going to bring this guy over a smidge. I'm going to stretch it back up toward the top. So we don't have as much filling to do in Photoshop. I'm keeping my eye on the road as well. I don't want the road to look all janky and messed up. All right, cool. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, something like that, maybe. That's, that's doable for now. So we're going to go ahead and commit that change. And it's going to apply the perspective warp to our image. Now, obviously, we have a lot of stuff that needs to be filled or cropped away or what have you. Now, we did apply this to a smart object, so it applies as a smart filter. You can see here, if we want to see what the image looked like before, we can just shut off the smart filter. There's what we had before. There's what we have after. So we sort of straightened up, as you can see, this building. Now it comes at the cost of losing bits and pieces of the image, and we can get rid of uh, all of those open areas by using the crop tool. If we don't delete cropped pixels, this technically is a non-destructive crop. So we can bring that in. We can bring this down, right? We can bring this up just a smidge. Voila. And we don't really need to bring it in from the side at all. Go ahead and commit that change. Um, and it's going to give it a second, and then the smart filter appears again, and you can see we have a somewhat corrected image. Now, obviously, this building is still bent way over, so we could go in and perspective warp that and adjust that as well, but for our intents here with this image, we have a version of this photo where this big building is much, much straighter, and we've learned a thing or two about perspective warp. So it takes a little bit to kind of use it and get used to it. Oh, what in the world did I just do? Uh, it takes a little bit of time to, to use it and get used to it and know uh, exactly what you're doing with it. But it can be a really fun tool to play around with. And you can do a lot with it as far as doing things like exposing a part of a building that you can't really see very much. And maybe the client wants to see more of after the fact. And you've already flown home or it's hours and hours away from wherever uh, the shot was to be taken. There's all kinds of things you can do with perspective warp. It's pretty stinking cool so for perspective for perspective warp in photoshop that's it get it got it good nathaniel dodds and i'll catch you in the next one